country. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 316. Each week, uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google+, and the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Jenny Halaz, um, CEO of uh, JLH Marketing. Um, Jenny lives in almost to the east coast of the USA in Raleigh, or close to Raleigh anyway. North Carolina, that, is that, am I pretty close, Jenny? Oh, Jenny. Yeah, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. Ah, oh, cool. And it's about uh, 200 miles to the east coast. <laughs> uh. 200 miles in the UK takes you from one side to the other. Um, <laughs> it takes you from the, from uh, the middle of North Carolina to the East Coast. <laughs> I'm about 200 yards from the English Channel. I'm what it's worth. 200 miles if you speak in French, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Voila. All right. Um, David uh, is based in uh, West Sussex uh, in the UK, uh, down near Brighton, uh, if you're not sure where West Sussex is. He's um, um, CEO of, uh, is it Chameleon Marketing, David? Oh, that, that, that just sort of sits in the background. Uh, David Rosen, Digital Marketing will do. Thank you very much. Thank you, mate. Um, David is an SEO copywriter for, for about two centuries standing. And uh, at least now. Um, because I've just had a big birthday, you know. <laughs> Tim okay. Kappa got his first job uh, in SEO uh, at the uh, um, Russian uh, embassy in the. <laughs> South of Africa. Yeah, he thought that SEO was, uh, stood for uh, Soviet Embassy official, but he now knows what it is. Anyway, Tim uh, is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com uh, and he's based uh, in the UK, in the uh, freezing wastelands of. Um, London, about a hundred miles north of uh, London. Masataki Wasa is um, webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's based in Wimbledon, uh, in uh, the middle of London. All right, uh, we've got uh, eight questions tonight. Um, let's look at the first one. This one from Ahmed Kumar Roy, who was kind enough to leave. Um, uh some very nice comments on uh, youtube thank you uh, ahmed um anyway he said in this question uh, hello guys i'm experiencing some strange issues with my niche uh, affiliate site i had a multi-niche site and tons of keywords uh, in the top three earning something like 3k per month um some are out of uh, some are out of 30 from the top five. I don't know what that means. Um, he said, after that, um, Google's um, expertise, uh, authoritativeness and trustworthiness algorithm uh, um, seemingly uh, um, devalued uh, his site and lost most of the rankings from the top three. However, then I tried to fix the canonical issues, remove sidebar, merge, slash, deleted similar posts, and just kept one, the primary niche, uh, removed the rest of the niches and changed the internal anchor text from exact to generic or semi-relevant anchor. This made the case work worse. Uh, visitors dropped 80%, earning dropped 78% or so. I don't know what to do now. Can you please suggest anything? Any advice is cordially appreciated.
I'm tempted to, to say that the problem is likely to be that it's an affiliate site um, and Google has uh, has objected to, to something about it. The, I, obviously, we can't see the site, so... Uh, but is it, has it uh, got loads and loads of ads and um, and affiliate links on it? What's the content like? Is it is it any good or is it um, just a load of content looking to target key phrases? Um, it's really down to you know what what how good is your site? Does it does it do what Google? expects from a site or is it trying to sell more than three 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 thousand dollars worth of uh, affiliate uh, goods uh over a month um i think you need to to step back and look at your site um and consider what what google might might think of it um and what you're trying to do with it and how you're doing it um, but you know, I I kind of have to be a little bit or a lot, um, um, a, a lot vague because <laughs> I haven't seen the site. Um, anyone got any better ideas? Yeah, no. for, yeah, go ahead. Well, for me, um, I was uh, affiliate site. Um, my my first thing, like I've said, would be ads on it. Um, I've read some few reports on sites which have recovered after the recent, um, you know, the, the, the past uh, updates towards the end of last year. Um, one of them, interestingly, in fact, it was an affiliate. It was not an affiliate site, however, it was a. Uh, well, I suppose it was. I suppose it was an affiliate site in in the sense of that, but it was for medical. Uh, practitioners uh, and services um, and they they obviously looked at their the authority that the whole eat side of thing I'm not entirely convinced of this eat stuff um, because eat is based on uh, it's it's you know we don't even know if it's baked into the algo in that sense um, and I don't know how it would be, but let's just so, so in a sense of that in affiliate site, um, like actually Joanne mentioned that, you know, do people know who's running this, where the products are being dispatched from, you know, if it's products, I don't know, or if it's whatever, who's managing this, where's the money going, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, so transparency on that side of stuff. Um, your ads, as I was saying, this, this medical one, they saw quite a big shift when they actually reduced their internal ads, even though you know they were they were internal on um, ads to this other potential uh, this other doctor that specialised in this, and that uh, they saw a significant jump uh, recovery when they when they looked at. Um, uh, removing the, the amount of ads on on, on page um, into a more uh, sort of uncommercial level, um, so I would I would certainly relook at that. And yeah, mate, you know, with affiliates, I don't know what your products are or what you're selling, but really look at the, the actual product based upon the uh, the other ten thousand people that are flogging the same product or or service. Uh, re-look at that, how you're doing that, and re-look at the content that you're using to, um, to, to, to actively target uh, customers, your user experience, basically, and the product experience for it. That's where I would really start on that. Yes, yeah, so, <clears throat> as I understand it, the side dropped. So he did a few things, and that caused another bout of drop. Um, so is it worth perhaps reversing some of the changes he had made? You know, he may not go back to the original position, but he may recover some of the bit that he had lost after making those changes. 
Yeah, I mean, this is a bad thing with SEO. We sometimes, and I think you learn it with experience over time, that when you see a drop, you don't shit yourself. <laughs> you know, you're like, okay, let's see how this plays out, you know, and you give it a couple of weeks, months, or whatever, and then you start experimenting. But the problem is, you see, if you're going to make massive changes, man, you must, you should always annotate your analytics with when you made what change where um because you and if you you, sh you shouldn't do m multiple different kinds of changes um all at once because you'll never know what worked what didn't work what was improving you know this is this is the big thing um don't 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 hit to like a you know a panic um you should always let things ride for a bit then sort of analyze the site, come up with educated guesses, because let's face it, most of the stuff is educated guessing. Yeah. Make make changes, annotate it, allow those changes to 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 see if those changes to take effect. So there's a lot of patience involved here. You know, jumping the gun, you can do a lot more damage because you don't know quite what you changed, all the things you changed. Well, hopefully you do, you know, before then, you know, you've got to start trying to dial it back. Um. <laughs> yeah, so it's about, you know, pruning you know, the branches. It's not about taking a chainsaw and chopping that entire tree. Masataki, what's uh, David Razam got on his head? Uh I don't know. He looks like a garden gnome. <laughs> All right. He's got gone from T-shirt to... Um... <laughs> You're in the well, I, I know I, I upset Massa earlier by being at a T-shirt, so I thought, uh, as the doorbell had run, I'd, I'd take the opportunity to get myself togged up um, for, the, for the weather that he thinks we have down here. You look like a disappointed football supporter. <laughs> the last uh, last time I saw something like that, it was at a bris. It was a what? Uh, look, can I add to to, to your you guys uh, your your excellent answers? Can I just add? Um, um, uh, when I was reading it, I, I it was was hor horror um, trying to fix uh, issues by removing a sidebar, uh, merging posts, and just keep one niche. Uh, in other words, dumping the rest of the pages and change the internal anchor text from exact exact to uh, generic or semi relevant anchors. Um, you know, to me, a, a link is a link. Um, and by an internal link is not that is not different from an external link. And but by removing the sidebar, you would have um, removed millions of links from your site. Um, and uh, you know, merging and deleting posts um, that you know without looking at um, what that what they were doing and. Um, going from say, oh, I don't know, t twenty categories to one. Um, I'd reverse all that. Um, would anyone disagree with that idea? Yeah, I would. I would reverse it, and then actually wait for it to stabilize again. Then take each you know, make educated decisions, but not all of it, you know, try one, allow, allow that to, to bed in, check the changes, you know, make educated step-by-step -step decisions. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you do, don't take a chainsaw to your site. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Okay, that's um, let's that, we'll call that a wrap for Ahmet Kumar Roy. Um, if I can get my mouse to work, 
Let's go to the next. This one from Nimi Gill. Um, Nimi said, for those that are claiming unclaimed Google My Business listings, are you adding the same website to those listings or are you creating a landing page with a new domain? Or are you using the Google site? So, uh, but, but I think she phrased this a bit weird because I, I wasn't entirely sure what she was saying. But so, look, if if I'm claiming if I'm claiming uh, a listing, <coughs> and a, a couple of scenarios, if I'm claiming a listing and that is for a single location business, then I would have that point into the main domain. If I'm claiming a listing for a multi-location business, then I would claim it and uh, have the URL to the internal location page. If they don't have internal location, you know, if they don't have location pages, uh, that's something you should be looking at. Uh, in the meantime, you can have it to the main domain, but you know, in terms of local SEO and in terms of the way local, any search works nowadays, it all depends on where the user is searching from. So it makes sense if that's a multi-location site to have a location page for that. It also makes sense to the user um, because they want to know where they're going to the shop, how they get there, what are the opening times, uh, where's best parking for that location, you know, uh, what do they sell all the services at the location. So ultimately, if it's a multi-service, uh, multi-location site, those GMB pages should be pointing to the the actual location page. With one slight exception, that generally your head office or your very first, and I don't know if you can identify which it is at this point because you seem to just be claiming unclaimed ones, but uh, in a multi, you know, in a multi-location site, typically the very first location that was ever built, like citations, the very first one that was open. Typically, you would just leave that one, and it's normally the head office, for example, that was the head office, that, but then they started building out. That one I would leave to the main domain. Um, but, you know, you can obviously change it if you want to the location page, it doesn't matter. But typically, you have one to the main domain, and all the rest are to the actual internal location page. It makes sense for users. Uh, think about when they're searching, they come across it, they see it in either in the local pack or maps, they click on it, then it takes them back to the main domain. Still hasn't answered any of their questions. You know, where's the best parking? How do I get hold of them? What's the local number? You know, all these kind of things. So it makes sense for you, for the users, and for Google, for those multi-locations to be going to uh, the internal page. As for a Google site, well, if they have a website, they should be having, it should be to their domain. Uh, if they don't have a website, um, it, uh, the Google Sites are a very quick, easy option um, to literally create a site for them um, within, you know, and it's pre-populated from all of their um, GMB, GMB listing. So if they've got services, it pulls in the services. If they've got a, if they're a restaurant, it pulls in their menu. If you, you know, trying out the new product beta, which probably won't be available in your dashboard, but it's coming. Um, then it populates your actual products, images, prices. It also pre-populates all your posts. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great, quick, easy, um, simple option to have a, a website uh, if they don't have one. You can always change it out at some point once they've built a new site. That's not a problem. And then don't take the business site down. So, Jim, you're doing Excel or something. Yeah, I clicked the uh, wrong button. Sorry, mate. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, the Google sites very quick and easy, you know, if they don't have a site, um, I typically use Google sites, even if they do have a site as, you know, as a, as a high authority, um, um, citation for a business anyway, but yeah, you know, it's up to you. Thank you, Tim. Um, look, um, also, I'd like to point out um, um, people like Benj Ariola and um, 
Michael Martinez, Michael Stricker, um, the people that uh, answer questions on our uh, Facebook group uh, through the week. It's really uh, much appreciated. All right, have we covered this for Nimi? I have just one thing I want to add, um, and that's that this question sounds suspiciously to me like a black hat tactic that I've heard bandied about. Um, and I just wanted to um, put on the record um, that, that that's a really short term thing. Um, and if you're claiming unclaimed listings that don't actually belong to you, um, you'll get caught pretty quickly. Um, users and uh, local guides tend to catch those and um, fix or report them quite quickly. Yeah, well, Google Google brought in a specific thing for this third party third party vendor guidelines, um, and Google doesn't mess about. Last year, they brought um, three multi million dollar lawsuits with in conjunction with the F something or other over in the states. Um, so yeah, if you're going down that road, you're going to get caught. Yeah, and just, just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course, uh, now Google sues. So, have fun. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, let's uh, move on from uh, Nimi's question. I hope um, she finds that useful. And I'm not going to attempt to read Cassie's question, but I ask you guys to have a look at it. Um, um, Cassie uh, started off saying, hello, I have a question concerning maintenance and pr pruning content uh, within a large site that has a ton of pages that are either expired or reoccurring, and then under various headings, and she finally uh, um, fin finishes by saying, I can't remember what she said now. Um, oh, she said, any help is much appreciated. Uh, so if you guys could have a look at uh, what Cassie has written. She's asked questions of us before. Don't all fight over it. Okay, so for the first one, um, she's essentially asking, they, they have like event URLs um, that are from years past. Um, don't get any traffic or have any backlinks. Um, she's just concerned about deleting all of these pages at once. Um, she says they're in the XML sitemap right now, so they get crawled, um, but they're useless and I wanna cut off the dead weight. Um, but I'm worried about deleting a large number of pages from the site at once. So just for that one to begin with, um, I would say absolutely take them out of the XML sitemap. Um, and then in terms of deleting them, I would probably do them in batches personally, because if you're talking about several thousand pages, then that, that can be uh, problematic if you delete that many at once. Um, but certainly taking them all out of the XML sitemap is is a great first step. Okay. Somebody has a phone ring. Yeah, it's me. I'm sorry. No, 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 no don't be sorry. I just didn't want you to miss the call. <laughs> yeah, about nine times out of ten, it's just spam. So. <laughs> no, it couldn't be. Tim Cap is here with us. All right, um, do we have any more um, opinions uh, for Cassie? Well, give me a second. I'm reading the second part now. <laughs> okay. Okay, the next one is about like recurring promotions. Like if you have a um, 
special menu for New Year's and uh, Thanksgiving every year. These aren't the examples she gave, but the events, the examples she gave are, are religious, so we're not going to go there. Um, but um, she asks, is there ever an instance in which I might want to 302 those pages and then remove it for the short amount of time they're valid? I would say I would let these pages stay. Um, and there may be some, some conflicting opinions on this, but my opinion is I would let the pages stay year round, update them each year, um, but only put them in the XML sitemap during the time that they're valid. Um, but uh, I mean, personally, I wouldn't go to the trouble of putting them in the XML sitemap during the time they're valid. I would just assume that Google will probably find them. Um, but then I wouldn't 302 them. So I guess you kind of have to do one or the other. You either have to remove them from the XML sitemap and 302 them or don't remove them and don't 302 them. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, so the way uh, I typically deal with these, especially with uh, hotels, um, their special offers change seasonally. Um, also, you have Valentine's, Christmas, all sorts. Um, essentially, um, once once that's over, we update the page itself. Um, although it recur recurs, you know things do slightly change. Like you know, if you have different things, your dates are going to change. They they happen on different dates. Well, obviously Christmas doesn't. But um, we we literally, you know, we we, we remove the content um, itself, provide some insight if we have it onto when the next one is going to be happening or when the new special offer or the new product or the new event will be taking place. Uh, we also put a sign up there, uh, sign up for, you know, to be notified when there's, when, when the new, when the new, um, uh, when, when it's about to go live with a new one, because, Hey, you know, we still want to build out a marketing list. Um, so, you know, people that are interested get, get, get an email notification. And depending on what CMS you're using, you know, typically we take them out of the navigation. Once you take something out of the navigation, although it's still live, you take it out of the navigation, it comes out of the sitemap. So, uh, you know, it, it depends. You can put those rules in. So you take it out of it, uh, although it's still live because you still want users if it's been, you know, <laughs> social media and whatever other links that are built to it over the years. Uh, even even customers that have that, that may have bookmarked it, um, they can go to it straight away. It's still live, uh, but it's not in the navigation. Uh, and by taking it out, it uh, comes out of the sitemap. That's the way I typically deal with those. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Jenny. Um, anything more for Cassie? All right, let's, um... I, one, one quick thing. Uh, I just wanted to um, note that um, one of the commenters actually said another option is uh, no index follow. Um, I would strongly recommend against that. That just leaves a page on your site that um, you're telling Google not to index. Um, but that is just going to sit there and not do anything. Um, I, I don't know why you would do that. If you want yeah. something that isn't like, that's not like, you know, a login or something like that, it, no indexed, uh, why keep it at all? That just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no index followed. No index means it's not in the index. If it's not in the index, uh, it doesn't have links. Right. So mm. why would you even keep it on mm. the site and yeah. use the hosting bandwidth for it if it's not going to be indexable? Yeah, that makes sense to me. All right. Uh, Amelia uh, Georgievska asks the question. Uh, she says, hi, guys. First of all, happy new year to everyone. So happy to be part of this community. Looking forward to learning from all of you. 
my sentiments exactly. Um, she goes on to say, I'm having a hard time uh, understanding how price range property for schema brackets rich snippet works. Should I post my actual price range, 30 to $50, or should I just use the dollar symbols? If the second one is true, how do you use them? What does dollar, 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 dollar mean? Is it how expensive I perceive my service to be? Cheap, average, expensive. Um, does dollar refer to zero nine? Oh, you guys can read that. Um, this doesn't make sense personally for me since there are more expensive services and deals on the market. For example, real estate. Maybe it's a combination of the first two or something else that I can't think of right now. Yeah. Thank so you for your time, I believe that most. Yeah, go on, Tim. So the dollar, dollar, dollar was used as an example in the actual structured data from Google. Uh, lazy SEOs just freaking use that, you know, because they can't be asked. Um, you could go with uh, based on your your service price, you know, give them an option. You know, you, you typically, you, you can do that. Or you can do what um, us intelligent SEOs do and actually add something that uh, is of value in the search results. So, for example, uh, on my hotel properties, it says best rate, you know, uh, best rate guaranteed direct. That, you know, in the search results, the customer sees best rate guaranteed direct. I'm actually going direct to the hotel rather than through a freaking OTA. Um, mine, for example, reads um, price on quotation because I always provide a quotation. I don't go, yeah, that's going to be 50 bucks. You know, I provide a quotation. So my, my, my price range dreams, price on quotation. The user in the search results knows exactly what the pricing is going to be. Um, if you want, you know, it's entirely up to you. I don't know how your, how your pricing works. So if you do have three different packages, one's 10, one's 20, and one's 30, it might make sense to say between 10 and 30. Um, it might also make sense to say packages available, pricing package. You know, what makes sense to your business? You should know how your price range works. But think about the user and how you can actually use this, which appears in, your, in, in search results, to attract that user over and above your competitors that are appearing in search results. So if your competitors are going dollar, 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 and you say price of quotation, <laughs> You know, don't do things like best rate guaranteed. I've have had I have played around with that, <laughs> um, and, um, and there seems to be some things which are omitted or not displayed when you start being on the slightly spammy side. So you know, price on quotation, um, things like that uh, that make sense to your industry. Yeah, I would just add that that dollar and dollar, dollar and dollar, dollar, dollar comes from things like Yelp, um, where they identify, um, say, for a, a restaurant um, in the U.S. at least, if it's uh, you know more than thirty dollars a person to eat there, then it's usually three dollar signs, um, and if it's you know a a, a food truck. Um, then it's one dollar sign, um, but typically that's going to be really only for restaurants and really only for um, for real specific cases. Um, so I would agree with Tim and err on the side of try to provide some interesting or useful insight with that price range property rather than try to figure out in your industry what $1 sign versus $3 signs means. It's, it's not particularly useful for the user. Excellent. All right. Um, let's move on now to the next. Number five on your run list is from Aussie. And um, he asks, is there a Google algorithm to update in 
Um, it looks like something is different uh, in this year. Thanks. Um, My here. question is, has it stopped updating? <laughs> <laughs> Google updates uh, every day. Um, yeah. Well, and I mean, seriously, since like the end of November, it's been like an like an update a week. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the tools like um, uh, SEM Rush's uh, tool or Aguru or any of those, um, you just see constant fluctuation since about the middle of November. Um, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I was thinking the other day that the, the number of alerts I see for for um, for fluctuation levels uh, it makes you wonder whether we should uh, whether they should be recalibrating that that this level of uh, 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 of upset and uh, and waving up and down is uh, you know is now normal. <laughs> Yeah, I, I often think Google um, over the years has um, brought in um, a, a greater number of um, changes um, during a holiday. And, um, you know, like when we're supposed to be resting, that they, they throw a spanner in our works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's go to number six on our run list. This one from Preeti. Rani, the, the benefit of creating a site on sites.google.com. Uh, Preeti said, hello, everyone. Uh, please tell me what the benefits are. Uh, thank you. Well, it's just the same as if you're using, you know, Wix without migrating to your, you know, without, without, without using... Um, uh, you know, using your own domain, but uh, at Google Sites, you can you can you can change to your own domain. It, you're just building a site. Um, uh, you can also do the word the free WordPress ones, which stick to your <laughs> own domain. You know, Yola, um, all of these things. It's it's essentially the same thing. It's a you know you 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 are, if you're using the free version, you get a sub. It's basically a subdirectory um, within it. Uh, there's no benefit of it. You, it's still based on the content you publish, um, the usability, the, the content. The, you know, you're not going to get some just for using that. Yeah, I mean, about the only benefit is that it's cheap. I mean, it's like, it's what, like $5 a month um, to, to host it um and your domain registration is included um but if you actually want to get indexed and and ranked um I, I have to disagree with the community answer from seo seattle um i don't think your content has better online visibility at all um if anything it's probably considered of less value because it's um, it's obviously kind of a, a do-it-yourself website sitting on the Google domain as opposed to having your own domain. Um, now, if you register your domain through Google, build your site through Google, and have your DNS pointed to Google but have it all on your own domain, then that's totally fine. I don't think you'd see any um, benefit or detriment in that case. Um, and it is a cheap way to do it, but the the actual site builder is is quite limited. Um, I use it for my neighborhood's HOA, um, a, a homeowners association for those of you who aren't US. Um, and um, it works fine, but it's not, I don't think it's a long-term business solution, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I totally agree. I think the only thing that you can say is that you are using Google's infrastructure. So in that sense, it's going to be pretty stable and pretty fast. But you know, that 
isn't going to be of direct benefit. You have that s sort of security and um, assurance that it's going to stay around. Um, but otherwise, hmm. Yeah. I mean, I guess if somebody was looking for a do-it-yourself platform that they could grow with um, that was cheap, I would recommend sites.google.com because I think um, it does it, uh, it it's easier um, than WordPress and it's um, more likely to grow with you and allow you to someday use your own domain name than Wix or Squarespace. Um, I'm just picking on them. There are tons of them. But isn't there an issue with portability, as it were? Because if you started with WordPress somewhere, then you can keep WordPress and move to another host, another server. Whereas with size.google.com, how, how portable is it? This, I haven't used it, so I don't know. Yeah, no, not at all. That's, that's my point, is that if you're going to use one of those non-portable sites, um, then, then I would recommend sites.google.com over a Wix or a, or a Squarespace. Um, but um, that's more for for cost and and ease of use, in my opinion. Um, WordPress is where I would recommend that people build a site if they want it to be portable um, in the future. But WordPress the the barrier to entry, the barrier to entry for WordPress is a lot higher, I think, and you have to do a lot more custom configuration to make it as fast as a sites.google.com site is going to be. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see we're, we're losing Tim Capri. He's off. They're going to chainsaw down the woods outside of Corby. Um, th thank you, uh, Tim, um, and we'll see you next week, mate. Cheers, everyone. Ciao, ciao. All right. So, and, and the other thing I'd, I'd point out to add to um, you guys, uh, your excellent answers, uh, Google can't even get it together for their own sites. Um, they, they constantly muck it up. So why would you have... A very fair point. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, let's um, go to the next. And the next is from uh, Gardmore Incorporated, full service security provider. Um, it's titled Reporting a Violation of SEO Keyword Optimization. Uh, how do I report a company that is violating the rules with SEO optimization keywords? They are basically putting their competitor's business name as keywords throughout their site and being ranked as number one on the first page. I don't think this is a fair um, business practice and could be a copyright infringement, not necessarily. Um, but in some cases, yes. Yeah, so, but I, 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 Anyway, not sure that using other big companies in your site is a serious violation. Sometimes um, larger companies have legal departments and, and will uh, hassle people, but I don't think anyone's ever been taken to court. Or have they? Maybe. Maybe they have. Yeah, yeah they have. Um, my my sister-in-law is a trademark attorney, and she actually has... Um, has filed lawsuits on behalf of her clients um, for people using their brand names and their trademark terms in um, meta tags even. So um, there, there definitely is law around that. But um, I guess the first thing I want to say is that um, the way this question is worded, reporting a violation of SEO, that there's no such thing as a violation of SEO. Um, there's best practices and there's Google guidelines, but there's no there's no real rules to SEO in terms that it, like you can't call up the police and file a police report because somebody's using your keywords in their meta tags. Um, it's really more of an issue that your legal team has to sort out, and it has to be sorted out based on. Um, based on the applicable laws in, in your country. Um, 
I, I'm, there is a Google spam report page. Um, you could you could report the spam to Google. Um, they, they, um, um, uh, I think they've deprecated that, Jenny. That, that, oh, yeah? Think, you I can't even think, do that anymore? Don't, I don't think they're answering it anymore. Well, I stopped reporting like two or three years ago because it became obvious that they weren't doing anything with those reports. So what, I, I think there's still a, a link somewhere where you can do that, but I mean, I don't think they're doing anything with it. They might be doing something in aggregate to identify specific violations, violation types and make adjustments to the algorithm, but I kind of doubt it. Yeah, I agree. All right, uh, let's go. But to that sucks. That sucks that that's working. It really does. And I've seen it happen. Um, so it's not that we don't believe you, Guardmore, although you should probably put a actual picture instead of an avatar. Um, but um, that there's not really anything you can do about it, unless it's your company, and then you can file legal stuff cease and desist that sort of thing if your pockets are deep enough yeah exactly and, and, and I, th I think that's what people play on uh, the, the fact is that uh, they know that they're doing the wrong thing but um nobody's going to uh, go, go go to the trouble of taking them to court because um and, and particularly the bigger companies uh, they can just um legalize people uh, until they're broke. All right. And they will. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. And this one is oh. from Tara Robinson. I think David had something to add to that oh, last one. Yeah, Sorry, I do. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> um, there is always the, the, the other way of looking at it, which is to go and do some dang good SEO on your own site and outrank the buggers. Um, you know, what they're doing is not good SEO by the sound of it. So, you know, if you do the stuff by the by the rules and you create some really good content on your site and you have you you have the weight of the brand from your site, then you should be able to just outrank these people. It might it might take you some time, but it may well be the better route. You know, unless you've got very, very big and deep pockets just just do the right things and i've uh the the link does still exist so i've dropped the uh spam report link in the chat <laughs> and uh, we can share that yeah um, I, I don't doubt that the link exists I, I i just doubt that they're actually doing anything with it anymore um because well, it, it, i do too but if you're if it's really bugging you then there's there's something you can do you feel like you're doing something yeah i think that's called a placebo isn't it um, <laughs> anyway tara robinson has a question on backlinks um she said i'm wanting to get some more backlinks for a website i'm working on but struggling to come up with some more does anyone have any suggestions uh, Job and John um, provided a link to a site. Uh, it looked all right to me. But, um, yeah, backlinks, it's not really a question that we handle here. But I don't know. I'm interested to know your comments, guys. I mean, if you could even tell me what industry or vertical you're in, I might have some ideas. But just a generic get more backlinks, no. I I get nothing for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, don't go to Fiverr. <laughs> well, uh, the, the, if if you uh, were to Google, um, it, say Google for backlinks um, with the file type XLS, um, you'd probably find uh, find some. Oh, all right. Okay. I've, I've got a little bit of a tip for you here. Um, do a backlink analysis on your own site and see if you've got backlinks pointing to pages that don't exist anymore. And if you do, 
do a 301 redirect from that page to the relevant new page. You don't have to actually get any more backlinks, but you can maybe recover some that you've lost. Yeah, exactly. That's a good one. All right. Um, I think it's that time again. It, yes, it is. It's thank you for watching time. Um, we thank you for your interest um, in uh, sticking with us uh, so long. Um, your interest in what we do makes what we do worthwhile. We'll be back uh, at the same time uh, next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but until then, uh, it's good night. Uh, and thank you very much. And thank you to the panel too.